everyone, and welcome to episode 7 of Battleships. In the previous episode, we turned our one-player game into a two-player game, so that our two different players could shoot against each other and try and destroy each other's battleships. Our game is basically done. It works, you can play it, you can decide who's won, and have a great time. But in this episode, we're going to add on some bells and whistles that add on some nice new features and also show some uh, different interesting ways of structuring our program. I'm not sure what order we'll do them in, we'll just see what seems the most fun. But some of the ones we came up with last time are we want to make the ability for a random AI player to shoot at just random places on the board. We want to make there be a way for players to arrange their battleships in secret. Maybe we want there to be some more detailed, neat announcements like it's your turn, you missed, you have won, you just destroyed a battleship. We want to make our board renderings a bit better, have our battleships look a bit more like this. And then we want maybe, probably won't get onto this, but we'll see, an intelligent AI that looks at where our current ships are, that it's sunk, and then shoots next to them in an effort to try and shoot some more. Let's start with, let's start with the random AI player. I think that's pretty cool. So in order to have an AI player, we're going to want to have we're going to want to represent them. Do I still have this function? I do. We're going to want to represent our AI player by a function, I think is the way we want to do this. And that function will take a game board and then return a shot, a shot location at least. And this for our random player will just choose a random place on this game board and return it. For our AI player, it will do some rather more in-depth analysis of this game board. One thing I just noticed is if we did go the full AI route, we'd either have to trust ourselves not to cheat, um, or we'd have to pass in a different version of a game board that doesn't have any battleships on it. Because you could just say, well, I'm going to look at this object, look at the battleships, and just shoot them one by one. But for now, we'll just make a random AI function that takes a game board and returns a shot location. That's our first task. And then we can look at how to actually integrate that into our program. I think that part's actually pretty neat. So we'll just put our function, let's put it down here. So random AI. It takes a game board and it generates a random move. <coughs> I forget exactly, we're going to need to get Python random integer. Random dot randomly selected, rand int, here we go. Just copy that over. Okay, so in order to get the random x coordinate, we're going to need to use random.randint. And then the two arguments here are the two boundaries that we want to generate random um, numbers between. So it's going to be from 0 to gameboard.width, because the x coordinate is the width of it. Then the y coordinate, oops. It's going to be the same thing, but for height. And then we return a tuple of x, comma, y. And in order to use this, we're going to need to import random, the random module. And that's it. That's that's all we need for the function. Let's call it random AI move, actually. But how are we going to integrate that with our program? We could do something like have a little flag like use AI equals true or, or something like that. But I think we can actually integrate it into the same structure as our human move in quite an elegant way. Because if you think about it, we can structure, a, think of a human as basically the same thing, where it's a function that takes a game board and returns a coordinate. So what if 
we took these bits here and wrapped them up in a function that looked the same as our other one. So this would be human move and then in the same way we return x comma y and because human move and random ai move because these two functions have the same what's called interface they both take a game board and they both return a coordinate anywhere where we use the function human move we can also use the function random ai move and vice versa we can just switch them out completely for each other um, and they'll we don't have to change anything else about our code and so what that makes me think is so well before we go any further we can replace this with we can actually just say shot location equals um, i suppose they're not sh moves are they they're more just call it get human shot and get random AI shot this becomes get human shot and we've already um, combined the X and the Y into a tuple so we can just pass in shot location here and what I'm saying and pointing out is that we can easily just get a random AI shot. And then I think this will, for now, this will just have our two players face off in a completely random manner. Uh, although, that's interesting. Render defensive board. Oh, I bet I know what's happened. Yes. This actually needs to be minus one. And the reason for that is random.randin, say, say our width is 10. That means that this can, could return a number, any number between zero and 10. And so if say it returns 10, which I think is what happened here. Even though our board does indeed have 10 X coordinates, has to have 10 columns, that means that it's indexes because we start indexing from zero only go from zero to nine. So if we try and pass in 10 here, we get this list index out of range error. So this is a common thing you might have seen elsewhere that sometimes you just have to subtract one um, from when you're dealing with um, list indexes. So we do that, we subtract one, and now maybe this will work. Great, look, we just had our two computer players speed pair, um, face off against each other at the speed of light. God, they're not very good. They take a long time to, to get just those two little squares. So this is, this is pretty good. However, as it's structured, we still need to have um, both players playing with the same, um, the same logic. Whereas what would be nice is if we, can asso we could associate a particular logic, a particular function with a player. So we give each player a name, and now a new property of a player, they don't just have a name, they also have a, a move, sorry, a shot function, a way of getting a shot from them. And now that there's these two things, I think that's worth making a little player class for, just to tie them together. It's gonna be very simple. They just have a name, and we'll call it, we'll call it a shot function like that equals name and now when we initialize a player we can say that our players are player let's say that Frank is a human we'll call him Rob because that's me and we want to say get human shot and what we're doing here is we're passing in the function. So we're not passing, we're not evaluating the function and passing in the result. We're passing in the function itself. And so that means what we're going to do down here is say that shot location 
we're going to, instead of saying index and boards, we'll say offensive player dot move function on the defensive board. And when we call dot move function dot move f, that's going to actually call whatever function it was we passed in up here because we've stored that on shot like that. I keep calling it move function. It's called shot function. That's a better name for it. And that means we can generalize this. We can now say that let's say Alice is actually a get random AI shot. And we could also, we could have a, a different player that was a, a, a skilled AI like we talked about building and allow them to get a shot as well. Now we need to figure out how to, we need to actually get this offensive player. So the offensive player is going to be players offensive index. And we don't have this player names thing anymore, remember? We have offensive player dot name. And same thing down here. Player dot name. And we don't need these player names anymore. Oops. I'm still not certain if we should join up our players and game boards. If we should if a player we should maybe we should also pass in a game board and make that a property of a player. I'm slightly hesitant to do that. I can't really articulate why. Let's leave it for now because it's probably a bit of a pain to undo if we decide that it was actually the wrong thing to do. Let's see if this works now. I want to shoot at 1 1. And then Alice very quickly goes there. I'm going to shoot at 0 0. And Alice shoots here. 9 4. So what happened there? Oh, I shot here and then Alice went here and so on. We can keep going forever. I happen to know that that's where the battleship is so I can just cheat and win. But that's, that's it. We've got a random AI player. And what I really like about this approach is that it abstracts out. It thinks, okay, what does it really mean to get a move? And it sees, okay, well, the way that an AI gets a move and the way that a human get a move are somewhat similar. They're both, you can construct them both as functions that take a game board and return a location. And so because they have that same interface, what they take in and what they return, we can generalize them and make our code very neat. This code here doesn't actually care what shot function does. As long as it is able, this code is able to give this function a board and get back a, lo a location, a coordinate, it just doesn't care how it works. And having the different parts of your code decoupled and so they don't have to care about each other works is typically a very nice property. It allows you to do a lot of flexible things. Let's have a look at some more intricate board renderings. I think that would be pretty cool. So we can come down to here. This probably won't be that difficult actually. And as I said, the way, huh, actually, hmm. the way I would like to think about this is that we have this for horizontal ships and we do this for vertical ones. And the reason I said, hmm, and paused for a little second there is because we need to work out in order to know, say we're th thinking, okay, we're going to print the first character of our ship. In order to know whether to print a pointy bracket or a carrier or a V, we need to know whether we're dealing with a ship that's going side to side. And if, say, if it's going side to side, which direction is it going in? Or if we're dealing with a ship that's going up and down like this. And these are, these are things that we could infer from our body, but they're also properties that we, we kind of use to build our battleship in the first place. 
So we have choices here. We can either write some logic to take our body and convert it back into to this form, or we could um, we could pass in the head length and direction explicitly into our battleship initializer. I'm not actually sure what's best. I think it's actually possible that we should Maybe we should pass in. Here we go. We can do the simplest thing for now, where we just do everything. This is definitely not best and what we want to do long term. But we can just pass it in like this and see how it goes. And then we'll figure out what, once we've used this information to print our board, we can see which bits we actually need and which bits we can get rid of. So we'll leave a little to do. Which of these params do we actually need? And just to be clear, the reason we need this is because if all we have is the body, which is that list of coordinates, it's not immediately obvious which direction our battleship is pointing or um, which direction it's traveling. So we have we are going to need to know now that we know which direction our battleship is pointing in we're going to need to know which um, what number element of the body we are currently dealing with and in order to do that we can use this enumerate method have we used that anywhere else no and what this does, I think we can write our code like this, is instead of just iterating through and being past the contents of this body, we also get this little counting variable that for the first time, for the first element, it will be zero, then for the next one, it will be one, so then for the next one, it will be two. So that means we know, thanks to this enumerate method, what number body element we are dealing with. And that's useful because we can say, okay, well, if it's if i is zero, that means we're dealing with the first element. And let's say we want to print um, a a point like this. And if we're dealing with the final element, so that would be body and we'll have to minus one from that for the same reasons as we had to subtract elsewhere then we can say the character is that otherwise the character can just be a dash you may have noticed this is not going to work we'll, we'll need some more detailed logic for when the the ship is traveling up and down we'll come on to that in a second so now let's print, we'll say that we do want to show the battleships. I want you to add. Ooh, list object is not, oh, I did it again. It's not a function, it's just a property. Neat. So, I mean, it, it does not, doesn't look how we want it to, but you can see that it printed different characters for the start and the end of our battleship in our admin board. So that's pretty nice. But we do need to behave differently if we are dealing with something going up or down or side to side. Let's just do it like this. We'll say if the direction is either, this will be for, oh well, we, we need to be particularly careful. Okay. So if we're dealing with the first element,
The reason I'm pausing here is that we need to do different things for if we're traveling in a north, south, east or west direction. Because say we're traveling from west to east, these are the correct ones. But say we're traveling from east to west, we'd need to instead reverse these so that we didn't end up with a ship that looked like this. As always, loads of ways we could do this. A way that I quite like that I think might just about minimize repetition is the following. So we'll say if b direction is north, then we'll say that the characters we want to use are going to be Although actually that's that's not true, that's false. We're going to, if it's north, we want to start with a V, then have a pipe, and then have a carry. And then what we'll do here, um, let's just put these placeholders in for now. If I is zero, we want to use the first character in our list so this whatever it is we want to use for the start of the ship if we're at the end then we want to use the character that we want to use at the end and otherwise we just want to use this middle character and that way we can we only have to repeat this if i equals zero logic once because if we didn't do this we'd have to say if b dot direction is north do all of this like if i is zero character equals this if it's the end, it equals this, and if it's in the middle, it equals this. And then we'd have to repeat this if statement for when it's the direction is west, and when it's east, and when it's south. We'd have to have all of these if statements each time. Whereas this allows us just to have two if statements. One to decide where, what characters we use, or what character set we want to use. And then another one to decide what... Um, what to use for this particular body element. So when you're south, going south, the first one you want to use is the top of the boat, and then the last one you want to use is the one going down. When you're going west, you want to use, you want to start with this, actually, if you think about it. And if you're traveling east, you want to use the same, but in different orders. And if your direction is different to that, then don't know how to help you. This might just work on its own. I wonder, let's see. I want to shoot at 6.6. Six. Great, that looks nice to me. Let's uncomment some of our battleships and get some traveling in different directions. Shoot a 6-6. Six, six. Cool, look at that. And what I quite like about this is it's very easy to reconfigure it to use different characters in different situations. So say we actually wanted to use, um, instead of an, a dash, we wanted to use equals. We just change that and then boom, we now we've got an equals there as well. So I think that's quite quite attractive. Now we have to figure out what we want to what we want to keep out of all this extra information we passed into our um, our ship here. So we certainly don't need head and we certainly don't need length. We do have made use good use of direction. And so the question here really is, do we want to keep requiring that you pass the direction in, or do we want to infer it ourselves from the body? Honestly, I'm not sure. I think both approaches have advantages. I think the advantage of passing in the direction is that it's much easier. We've already done it now. We don't have to write any extra logic to um, interpret the body elements. The disadvantage is that, say you wanted, it's just something extra you have to get to right, get right. Say you weren't using our build method and you just wanted to pass in your own body manually, 
it's going to be you're going to have to just make sure you get the direction correct because say say you uh, had body characters that looked like they were going side to side but you passed in a direction of north you're going to end up with a weird rendering of your battleship i think for now since we're here let's just leave it like this but i'm a little leery of this i think there's probably some better ways to do this so let's turn that just makes our admin board look nicer if we want to display um, the situation the, the entire situation including battleships to, to everybody so we made more intricate board renderings that works pretty well <clears throat> now we want a secret way for players to arrange their battleships i think let's call this an episode what we did in this episode was we added in a way for uh, a way to unite the concepts of getting a human shot or getting an AI shot. And so we made it very easy for ourselves to generate um, to generate new types of AI. If we wanted to make a like def get a clever AI, as I've said, all we need to do is make sure it conforms to this interface and then returns something that looks like a coordinate. That's obviously not a very clever AI, AI just returning zero, zero each time, but you do get the idea. And then after that, we wrote some code here to make the rendering of our battleship look a little nicer. So next episode might well be the last one. We'll come up with a secret way for players to arrange their battleships. We'll make some detailed and nice, neat announcement announcements. And then I think that'll probably be it. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.